A moral panic that radical Islam wants to take over this country is sweeping Britain, started by Keir Starmer, inflamed by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, and it's been legitimised by the Speaker of the House of Commons. In order to dig themselves out of a hole over the cross-party support for Benjamin Netanyahu's operations in Gaza, there's no evidence at all that there's any basis, as matters stand, that this moral panic is true. What the protesters are doing over Palestine and Gaza is part of the rich British democratic heritage. The real attack on democracy here does not come from pro-Palestinian protesters. It comes from the Tory right and Starmer's Labour Party who are trying to smear genuine protesters acting within the British tradition as extremists, and worse than that, violent extremists. So Keir Starmer is going to be Prime Minister almost certainly. He has pilloried and smeared an entire British community. He has allowed an inflammatory account of events which, to be honest, puts at risk the lives of ordinary Muslims who will be accused of being part of this radical Islamist plot to sabotage the British Parliament. As for Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker, his statement was reckless irresponsible. He was under fire personally for having given in to pressure from the Labour leader. How did he get out of it? Blame the Muslims. I never ever want to go through a situation where I pick up a phone to find a friend of whatever side has been murdered by terrorists. He is conflating peaceful democratic protest over Gaza with terrorist murder. This is very nasty politics. Just look at the headlines and the commentary in the newspapers. A highly political, highly violent ideology called Islamism is sweeping our nation. Still on this subject, as Suella Bravan has weighed in in her inimitable style and said, Islamists are in charge of Britain now. I think that's a, a very strong statement, but uh, I can sympathise uh, with the emotions behind it. I mean, you yeah. know, every day in every way we cave in uh, to uh, Muslims, to Islamists. A baying mob threatening murder, forcing the scrapping of a vote in Westminster, the mother of all parliaments, and the home of our representative democracy. What a time to be alive. And indeed, the extraordinary statements made in Parliament by Robert Jenrick, a former Conservative cabinet minister. This house appears cowed by threats of violence and intimidation. The mother of Parliament appears weakened and diminished as a result. We have allowed our streets to be dominated by Islamist extremists. This is very dark stuff. This is the politics of hatred. Now, I don't actually believe that these Islamists have got control of our country, but what I do believe is they've got control of Khan and they've got control of London. He's actually given our capital city away to his mates. The effect of the Speaker's actions has been to liberate the far right in British politics. This is the direct result of irresponsible immigration policies from both Labour and Conservative governments over the course of the last 25 years. The encouragement of multiculturalism. Everything we've built over the last thousand years and more is based on family, nation, and underpinning all of it are Judeo-Christian principles. And they're right through our constitutional settlement and everything else. And we've forgotten that. We're afraid to stand up for that. And now it's that that is being crushed. And to see fear stalking the corridors of Westminster in the way that it is, is, is a deep international humiliation for our nation. It's being portrayed as violent Islamists threatening British politics. It's actually mainstream British politicians pointing the finger at Muslims. There's going to be a by-election in the next few weeks, and it could be a radical Islamic party winning that by-election. Oh, so Islamic that is a possibility. Oh, oh, oh. You're saying an Islamic radical party in a couple of weeks in a special election is in one of these midland urban uh, areas that had it's the Rochdale so it's an urban area Hold in the it. north of but England but it's the one that's had the, the rape situation yes the grooming situation yes. hang on I don't understand this the grooming situation Tommy Robinson all these heroes fought it the rape situation and in that community you're going to have a special election and you may have a radical jihadist party send somebody to Commons that, after that all that correct. problems that is correct I think it's important to understand the fuller background. Last four to five months, there's been a cross-party 
coalition in British politics between the Conservative government and the Labour opposition. Israel has every right to defend itself. Israel has the perfect right to defend itself. Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel must have that, does have that right to defend herself. Israel has an absolute right to defend itself. Israel has a right to self-defence. Both major parties have fully supported the Israeli invasion of Gaza and given Israel Benjamin Netanyahu, more precisely, carte blanche to do what he wants. The two main political parties haven't represented the British population. The vast majority want a ceasefire. Very few people want the war to go on. But the two major parties have wanted that. And the SNP, quite correctly, and within their democratic rights, put a motion for a ceasefire. For the Starmer, it was potentially disastrous because it exposed huge divisions in his own party. Possible rebellion of maybe up to 100 MPs, including resignations from his shadow cabinet. And so there was rather an irregular meeting between the Labour leader and the leader of the House of Commons in which Starmer said, look, we want to have a Labour motion. This was against precedent. The chief clerk in the House of Commons advised Starmer that he should not permit it, advised the speaker it should not go ahead, but the speaker accepted this personal plea from the Labour leader. And once that had happened, Starmer's political problem was solved. So the speaker really has done Keir Starmer quite a favour by inserting Labour's motion into the uh, procedures today. And Nick Watts on Newsnight, very interestingly, was revealing that Starmer had actually threatened the Speaker of the House of Commons. He'd said to the Speaker, look, uh, if you don't accept my motion, I'm afraid that we, we, you can't rely on my support when I become Prime Minister later this year. Very, very inflammatory revelation because it suggested that Starmer was wielding muscle in order to breach parliamentary procedure. I've made a judgment on a precedent that's been done before. I have viewed it as that is my ruling. And I'm going to stand by the ruling and I'm not taking any more power towards Ren O'Hara. This then led to fury in the Commons. If I have listened correctly to what has just been said, on SNP Opposition Day, <coughs> should the Labour Party's motion be carried, then the SNP's vote will not be held. This was a consequence that he was warned of. Yes. So can you please advise me, where on earth is the Speaker of the House of Commons? Yes. So here we have the Speaker of the House of Commons under real pressure. Petition was put down among MPs to get rid of the Speaker. Job is under threat. And what does he do? He goes in front of MPs and says he made his decision because he was concerned for the safety of MPs. I apologise to the SNP and I apologise to the House. I made a mistake. I have a duty of care that I will carry out to protect people. It is the protection that led me to make a wrong decision. But what I do not apologise is the risk that's being put on all members at the moment. So this set in motion what the sociologist Stanley Cohen calls a moral panic. There was an immediate explosion of Islamophobic comment that these deranged Islamists were threatening parliamentary democracy. This was unacceptable. They were on our streets. One headline after another denounced these violent Islamists who were poisoning British democracy. So within a fraction of a second almost, the whole narrative has changed from how the Labour Party browbeat a weak speaker into stopping a proper debate on a ceasefire in Gaza, and it became how violent Islamists had intimidated Parliament. And that has become the story. It was very expertly done in, in a way. And these claims by the speaker, which were based on claims made to him by Starmer, were accepted without uh, inspection. There's no evidence that has been 
produced. No evidence at all. Nobody's asking for evidence about this. Very illustrative of what may have actually happened was a claim made by Scottish MSP Paul Sweeney about events in his Glasgow office. He said his office had been stormed by Gaza protesters and that his staff had been terrified. Glasgow police gave a very different story. They just said they were peaceful protesters and all the evidence supports that account of events. Now, 30,000 people have been killed in Gaza. More than 10,000 children. We've seen evidence of Israeli atrocities. And naturally, people feel very angry and upset that Britain is supporting the war. Not just the British Prime Minister, but the Labour leader. And we're supplying arms, and it is seen as a national obscenity. People are going to get angry. And not just Muslims, by the way. And so you have had demonstrations outside constituency offices, placards, chanting, I'm sure. But I think it's very important not to muddle up legitimate anger, which is part of being in a democracy, and physical threats, which of course are something else altogether. MPs absolutely need protection from terrorists, but they do not need protection from the British public when they protest in favour of a cause they strongly believe in. As it happens, I was one of the first journalists to raise the problem of security of MPs, which is a really serious issue. We know this because of the murder of Joe Cox by some sort of fascist. We know this because of the murder by a Muslim of David Amos, these terrible events. It's very important that these issues are taken seriously. And by the way, I was the first British journalist to raise this issue when George Galloway was violently assaulted on a London street, hospitalised when he was MP for Bradford West. I think this was about 2014. At the time, not a single MP raised the issue. Burkow, the speaker, had nothing to say. The, to the press was silent. And I wrote a piece, this is very serious, an MP is being assaulted. But there was a, a total absence of any interest in that. As it happened, Galloway was assaulted because of his views on Israel. So there is a general threat, not just from Islamists, but from all sides to MPs. And we have to take it very seriously. But what I fear here, looks to me we have the weaponization by the two main political parties, aided and abetted by the Speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, the weaponization of these threats to MPs in order to discredit peaceful, maybe passionate protesters against British government policy over Gaza. Bear in mind, we've had a practice run for the very frightening and troubling events of this week. And that was the attempt by Suella Braverman, when she was Home Secretary, to designate those marching in favour of a ceasefire in Gaza as what she called hate marches. To my mind, there's only one way to describe those marches. They are hate marches. She was trying to contaminate pro-Palestinian protesters with the charge that they were un-British, full of hatred or extremists. When actually, they were acting in the long and very honourable tradition of British protest movements. In my view, Suella Braverman embodies a far-right movement deploying bigotry and hatred to disenfranchise many of our fellow citizens. And this far-right movement is supported by many of uh, the leading British newspapers and is gaining increasing power, in, not just in the Conservative Party, but as events of this week suggest, perhaps has its admirers in Keir Starmer's Labour as well. Keir Starmer does need to be careful here. He may be in danger of buying into the noxious bigotry of the far right, which interprets everything which Muslims do as a threat to the sort of sanctity of what Britain stands for. There's a very big danger that this coming general election is going to be fought around the general narrative of the so-called Great Replacement Theory, which is a conspiracy theory that foreigners, especially Muslims, want to take over Britain and, and take over indeed the West and subvert our democracy and turn us into, a, to use their language, a foreign country. I think there's no doubt that the Tories will fight the election on this noxious narrative. And from the events of this week, you have to ask whether Sir Keir Starmer is preparing to follow suit. Keir Starmer is going to be almost certainly the next British Prime Minister. But judging by Sir Keir Starmer's behaviour this week, we really have reason to fear him as Prime Minister. He's shown such reckless judgment. He hasn't shown any understanding of what it means to be a statesman. 
a figure who could unite the nation rather than govern by creating fake divisions. As last week's events in Parliament show, the British media, as a general rule, do not interrogate statements made by British politicians. They do not hold politicians to account. Hence the real importance of supporting independent media like Double Down News. So join Double Down News on Patreon and read Middle East Eye, the outlet where I write a column.